Hi folks, how you doing? It's James JT at the movies and I'm back and on time for once for August's Blu-ray and DVD update. No 4Ks this month, nothing that quite uh, grabbed my fancy as it were, but still a nice juicy stack of DVDs and Blu-rays to show you. So as always, we'll start with the DVDs and we'll work our way up to some Blu-rays, shall we? Let's jump in. So... Folks might remember that I, uh, I went on holiday at the beginning of August and went and had a week in, in Devon with my mum. Uh, me and my girlfriend Laura went and stayed there. We connected over through from London as well. You might have seen some of the vlogs um, from around that time on the channel. Uh, but while I was there, uh, seaside resorts and there were lots and lots of charity shops and inspired by uh, James Millership and Big Paulie and a few of the others. And I love to go charity shop hunting anyway, uh, to be fair. Anyone who knows me knows that I always go and rifle through them. I went and had a look at all the ones in the, the seaside resorts down there and I picked up a few things. So I picked this up for 20 pence um, and it is one of those where you got the DVD free in the newspaper years ago and it's one to go in my Nicolas Cage collection, Honeymoon in Vegas, Nick Cage, Sarah Jessica Parker and James Kahn. I figured for 20p for a movie I'm not familiar with I'll watch it and then if I want to get a proper edition or whatever obviously I'm gonna gonna stick it in a proper case um, so that it stays properly looked after but the discs in great nick which I'm surprised for something that was given away free with the Daily Mail 20 years ago. Um, but yeah, so the next few ones are going to be ones that I picked up on, on that trip. Uh, this one is one that the in-laws have been recommending for a while. I've never come across it in the wild. Um, and then I, I got it for a pound uh, in uh, one of the charity shops down there. And it, it is Freedom Writers. Um, and it's uh, Hilary Swank in there. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out. The next two that I'm going to show you, you might remember me showing in my uh, my London Fop and Madame Two Swords vlog. Uh, I picked this one up because I fancied, as I as I said at the time, a shitty shark movie. Well, we never actually got round to watching it because we ended up watching the Fear Street trilogy on Netflix instead, and really enjoyed that. I just dropped it on the floor, so. I'll grab it um, but yeah we ended up watching the Fear Street trilogy instead whilst we were on holiday so we didn't end up putting this DVD on but it is 47 metres down number 2 uncaged it didn't mind it um, before when I, I think I saw it on Netflix I didn't, didn't mind it at all um, and then Cool Runnings uh, we picked up as well from Fop I loved this film had a great time with it I only watched it for the first time a few weeks ago if you want to know what my reaction to that was go have a look back on the channel it's only a couple of videos back to, to where this one will be me and Laura did a first time watch review and I really really enjoyed it Picked this one up. Um, it's one that I caught on the TV years ago um, and said that whenever I, I did finally come across it in, in a shop somewhere I would pick it up as I, I right enjoyed it and it's Mel Gibson in Forever Young this next one is Leonardo DiCaprio in The Basketball Diaries now I have not seen this film don't really know anything about it other than that it stars Leonardo DiCaprio and I'd heard the title before uh, but when I read the, the synopsis on the back it grabbed me and I'm interested to watch it this next one, surprisingly, and I'm assuming it's a rights issue, was not included in the DVD box set of the TV series I got. This is the, the movie that they made of the same series, and I'm assuming that even though it's owned by the BBC, like a different company will have put it out, because I think like uh, Laura's got the Dad's Army box set, but then the Dad's Army movie, like the original one from the, the 70s, isn't included in the, the BBC one. But anyway, came across this for a pound, and it's Porridge the movie. Um, when I last looked in HMV, they did have this, but it was 9 dollars eye on DVD and I figured I ain't paying that so I held out thinking that hopefully I'd come across it cheaper somewhere else and I did uh, this next one is a comedy from the early 2000s uh, based on a, a true urban legend if that's such a thing um, it's, it's inspired by the the DB Cooper urban legend uh, and it's without a paddle Another one that's actually out of the newspaper, but I actually bought this one online, paid uh, I think five ninety nine or something for it from a from a second hand curator, uh, and this is something to go in my James Bond collection. Uh, as you all know, I have all the James Bond films that have been released now multiple times over for most of them, uh, but I'm always interested to see like the sort of like the little offshoots and the things that you know studios can get away with legally. Uh, like there's been a few Ian Fleming biopics, including what I'm about to show you, where they sort of portray him as though he is James Bond and sort of make a knockoff Bond film. Anyway, this is Golden Eye, starring Charles Dance, and it's a, a biopic uh, of Ian Fleming and his time in the war. 
I picked this one up in York. Myself and Phil had a, had a day out there whilst um, the ladies were having a girly day doing whatever. Um, and the cast sold me on this. Um, and it's 21 grams. I couldn't believe I didn't have this next one. I was convinced that I had it. And then when I checked through the collection, nope, didn't have it in there. Uh, so when I saw it out and about, I had to pick it up. And that is Chariots of Fire. Got this in Poundland. And then I also picked up in that same Poundland trip, Indecent Proposal. Again, a film that I've heard lots about but never sat down to watch. And when I actually read the back of the DVD cover, I thought, do you know what? That actually sounds like it's going to be a really good watch. So I'm really looking forward to watching that one soon. In fact, I might make it a joint first-time watch for me and Laura later on in the year if, um, if we don't get around to watching it sooner than that. So, still some DVDs to come. These next ones are courtesy of my good friend and fellow bandmate, Zach. He's the bass player in my rock band, Blatantly Obvious. Um, he's uh, an avid car booter. He's not a, not a DVD collector or anything like that, but he, he's always up for, you know, sort of, turning a profit on things and sort of you know buying and selling in, in bits of second hand goods and whatnot. Anyway, he got a cracking deal where he got 1800 DVDs off somebody for 50 quid. So literally crates of these things turned up to his house. So I went through it with him um, and, and rifled through it. Uh, and it just goes to show how vast my collection is that what I'm about to show you is all I wanted out of that, um, that, that 1800 strong collection. There were things, of course, that I wasn't interested in, but the majority of things I either have on DVD or the, the Blu-rays back there. So I'll show you the individual DVDs first. Then we've got Interview with a Vampire. I've never actually seen this film. Um, I don't know why, but the the cover always sort of put me off and just made me sort of think this isn't going to be my sort of film. But anyway, uh, I figured for you know, gave me mate a few quid towards this, but uh, uh, you know enough to enough to buy a pint sort of thing. Uh, but you know, I figured for for cheap, I'd give it a go. Uh, then the next three are the three Shrek movies that I didn't have. Shrek, uh, uh, Shrek Forever After, the final chapter. Couldn't make my mind up then whether it was called just the final chapter or forever after. Shrek the third. And then the first Shrek. I already have Shrek 2 in the collection um, as it's my favourite one. And I wasn't really bothered about sort of going to HMV or wherever and spending, you know, however much it would be to get the box set or a fiver a piece on the individual ones. But when I was going through, I thought, well, do you know what? I'm giving you, you know, pence essentially for these titles. Um, I don't mind picking them up. And Zach were more than happy to... Uh, to, to let them come my way. The next one is a film that was a favourite of my sister's um, when we were growing up, and I remember enjoying it. And hopefully, uh, when I look at it on um, you know some more more grown up eyes, I'll still enjoy it again. Uh, but it's a bit of a bit of a music film. It's a coming of age one, um, and it doesn't really take the the journey that you'd expect it to take. Sort of thing you expect that uh, you know it's going to go from point A to point B to point C. Uh, and go through the natural sort of coming of age sort of musical comedy sort of thing. Uh, and, and I remember it doing some things a little bit different um, uh, and liking what it did. Anyway, uh, that is Band Slam, uh, starring uh, Ali Michalka, uh, Vanessa Hudgens, Lisa Kudrow and Galen Cannell. Uh, so yeah, I, like I say, right enjoyed that when I was a teenager. It was one of our soap's favourite films growing up. Um, and I fancied revisiting, actually. I asked ourselves if she still had a DVD and... When she moved out, she's got everything boxed up and doesn't know whether she's unpacked it or not yet. Anyway, so when I saw all that lot um, at Zach's uh, and found that in there, I thought, well, do you know what? I'll grab that. And I'm looking forward to watching that again soon. So we're next going to move on to some Blu-rays. And uh, this one came just uh, just last weekend. So the last weekend in August. So just slipped into, uh, into this update. Um, and it's again a film that we were talking about when I was on Playtendo Guy Pete's stream with John, with Andy uh, and with James. Um, and it's a film that the, the, the synopsis uh, and the build up that the lads were giving it really grabbed me. And apparently there's an Arrow version of this but it's um, you know really hard to get a hold of. Um, but I managed to get a, a Spanish import of it and that is The Last American Virgin. So I'm really looking forward to, to watching this one soon. I can't remember whether I showed uh, this one in my last update or not. And I suppose I probably could have watched it um, and then come back to you. But I'm fairly confident that I didn't. Although I definitely picked it up in July. 
So, um, this is Batman The Long Halloween Part 1. I loved this. Probably my favourite DC adaptation that they've done in the longest time. I really, really enjoyed this. And of course, in August, I picked up Part 2. Now, I thought Part 2 was really good, uh, apart from... The, the first sort of 15 minutes or so, the whole Poison Ivy story out with Bruce Wayne under under influence. I know it's from the, the comic and the story, but I just felt, given the, the cliffhanger we had at the end of the first one, we just seemed to be jumping in like we'd missed a scene. But anyway, that, that, that was my thoughts on that. Whilst in Devon, I also picked up Training Day. Uh, this was to upgrade my DVD copy. I've had it on DVD, a snapper case DVD, where it was like double sided, like widescreen and full screen, you know, on both sides, sort of thing. So, a really early DVD. Um, and it's a film that I fancied re watching um, and thought, Do you know what? I'm going to pick that up um, and get it on HD. I've been slowly upgrading my uh, my Jurassic Park movies. Uh, I only intended on updating the trilogy after I came across the first one in Poundland, and then soon after that, on the same hunt, came across the third one in CEX, both for you know a pound each, I think, or was it two pound in Poundland for the Blu-ray? Whatever it was, it was change anyway. Uh, and then I got a really good deal in HMV on the Lost World Jurassic Park with a nice slip, and really only intended on updating the trilogy as well. So I don't mind the two modern ones, but actually. I quite like Jurassic World, which is what I've picked up here on Blu-ray from Poundland. Uh, but I really wasn't a fan at all of Fallen Kingdom. I thought it was a real missed opportunity. Anyway, down in Devon, we went into to one of the Poundlands there in, in Plymouth. And uh, this was there for £2. So I decided to pick that up because it comes with the, the 2D Blu-ray as well. Um, so I'm not going to upgrade Fallen Kingdom. I, I don't go back to it unless I'm doing a run-through of the series. It's a bit like the Die Another Day of that series for me. I'll watch all the other ones every now and then. I'll get the, you know, the sort of the the urge to watch Jurassic Park 3 or Jurassic World or whatever and I will put them on randomly but I'm, unless I'm doing a series run through and I want to watch all of them I ain't ever going to put Fallen Kingdom on so there you go uh, I'm looking forward to watching this next one. Uh, again, I picked it up in Devon and haven't got around to watching it yet. Uh, I think it um, it won the well, it did when I'm reading it off the the screen here, but it won the BAFTA and the Oscar for uh, original screenplay um, and outstanding British film, respectively. Uh, and that is promising young woman. I picked this one up in a charity shop, as you can see it was 75 pence, and that is The Impossible. I watched this when it first came out, it's a really good drama, I thought that it was incredibly well acted, um, and had a, had a great time sort of uh, with it, if you can say such a thing about a disaster movie. Uh, but I thought it was really well done, and um, when I saw that for 75 pence I thought, yep, yeah, it's finally time to add that to the collection. So the penultimate Blu-ray to show you uh, is one that I thought I had and then again when I checked back on the collection I didn't and it's one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's more recent efforts and I think this is a mockumentary if, I, um, if I've understood it right and it's Killing Gunther. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out. Uh, if you know me and you know this channel you know that I'm a big Arnie fan so I'm sure that I'll enjoy that. So the final standard Blu-ray that I picked up before we show you the special edition ones as I always move on that way um, was one that I was actually sort of inspired to pick up uh, by Calvin Dyson who's somebody you've probably heard me mention before, uh, a YouTube inspiration of mine of sorts, definitely an inspiration for the, the debriefing 007 series as he's a YouTuber that is solely dedicated to reviewing uh, anything uh, to do with James Bond, the, the film series, the books, the music, the the works um, but he outside of that is uh, an Alfred Hitchcock fan and he um, he did a he did a review of the 39 steps now I thought that I had this uh, but what I was confusing it with was the third man uh, and so his review hooked me and I was like I need to see that film straight away and I bought the film and it was literally one of those where it arrived same day it was in the player and I was sat watching it this was one of the best films I have ever seen uh, and this is probably the most fun I've had with a film all year. Um, really, really bloody enjoyed this. Uh, and, you know, for anybody that might be potentially put off by the fact that it is a an old film now, because I think it's from 1935, this adaptation. Am I reading that right? So, yeah, 1935, this adaptation. Um, don't be put off. It's acted superbly. It's Hitchcock in his early days, but it's still got that fantastic Hitchcock feel to it. It's directed magnificently. And, you know, for a, for an 80-year-old film, whatever it is now, it was absolutely superb. I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend watching this if you if you haven't seen it. 
Well now, let us jump into some special edition Blu-rays. Like I said earlier, no 4Ks this month. Didn't quite come across anything that, that grabbed my fancy enough to pick up. But I have got some special edition DVDs, some uh, Blu-rays even. Uh, I've got some special edition Blu-rays. If I could speak, folks, I'll leave that one in for you. Uh, the first one is from the HMV Premium Collection, and it is Von Ryan's Express. So I was looking through when they had one of the sales on, um, and uh, when they were reduced in price, uh, and and it, the the synopsis really grabbed my uh, grabbed my interest. So I decided I was going to pick that up. Uh, the next two are upgrades for me. I picked this one up um, at the the beginning of August when we were when we were on holiday, um, and it is the deep Nick Nolte in uh, in the deep. Uh, I believe he's along with uh, with Robert Shaw as well, yeah, and uh, Jacqueline Bissett. Uh, so yeah, really enjoyed this film. It was one that me and my dad would watch fairly regularly. He seemed to be always on on like Channel Five or ITV Two or whatever when I was growing up. I have got the DVD in and amongst all that, um, and I sort of put off getting the the one. No one upgrade because I'm sort of thinking, well, you know, whilst I do watch it, you know, maybe once every couple of years or whatever, I'm, you know, sort of do I need to upgrade it anyway? It was reduced to seven ninety nine in the in the sale, and I thought, well, now's the time to get it. This next one, I I can't tell you the last time I was so hyped about a physical release. Um, I really, really like. I saw this. I didn't know. I had no idea it was coming out. It's one of my favourite thriller films. Uh, my aunt and uncle introduced me to this film years ago uh, when I first started really getting into films and sort of broadening my horizons with it. They were like, "This is one we watched when we were first dating and went to the cinema to see it." And you need to need to watch it anyway. Tracked it down. The DVD was massively out of print, um, and it took me ages to get it. I got a copy on eBay, and it was scratched, didn't play, and it took me ages then to track down a working copy. Copy, um, and it was sort of a bit of a holy grail of my collection for a while uh, and then I saw purely by chance um, on uh, on a Facebook post uh, that it's had an indicator blu-ray release I was chuffed straight on Amazon ordered day one release for me and that is Jagged Edge so that is going to be this weekend's film is that I'm over the moon uh, that this has come out that that's just absolutely phenomenal uh, the next two that I'm going to show you, you saw briefly in my FOP Madame Two Swords video. The first one is the Arrow City of the Living Dead. I took advantage again of the sale that was going on there, uh, reduced to £8 from its usual 15 And also Roger Moore, Richard Harris and Richard Burton, I believe, uh, in uh, The Wild Geese. So this is one that I've been after for a while and I actually believed it was out of print. Uh, but it just turned out that our, our lead store wasn't getting any stock of it in. But yeah, really happy to have this on a HD copy. The DVD copy that I've got is actually, um, it's another one of these sort of things where it's out of the paper in a, a thing and it's all, um, you know, I've put it in a proper proper case and everything like that, but it was my dad's um, and I've not come across it again. So like I say, I'm really, really pleased to finally have that in the collection. The final film of this update is a film from Brian De Palma. It's a film that I picked up on DVD earlier in the year, uh, as again the Arrow video version of it was out of print. I believe now that they must have lost the rights to it because it's come out on Criterion Collection, uh, and that is John Travolta in Blowout. So I'm really looking forward to this. My good friend Mike Woods, who's a subscriber of the channel, and he's a, he's a good mate of mine, and he's a good mate of Andy's as well over at Forgotten World of Movies, recommended that film to me and, and my uh, my co-host and, and good mate Phil from the uh, the podcast that I do. Um, he recommended that after we'd done uh, a bit of a bit of a discussion on uh, on Dress to Kill. Um, yeah, really, really looking forward to, to checking out the Criterion version of that. I think that's going to be great. It was, again, one of those sort of like day one purchases when I knew that was coming out. I was like, yep, going to get that. Um, it was weird, actually. The HMV down in Devon, where I got it, they didn't put it with the Criterions in the collector section. They they put it in the in the normal like A to Z stuff. So I went through and I thought, oh well, it's a smaller HMV. Perhaps they've not had it in or whatever. Um, and then was just browsing through, sort of almost a little bit tail between legs that I'd not been able to pick it up, sort of thing. Because um, I much prefer the whole going to a shop and picking something off a shelf than ordering it online. Uh, There's just more of a thrill in that for me, anyway. Um, but yeah, rooting through the normal Blu-rays, and sure enough, there under B, somebody had obviously filed it away wrong. Uh, so I was really happy to sort of find that in, a, in an unexpected place.
So there we are folks that has been my dvd blu-ray and boutique blu-ray update for august 2021 really appreciate you watching this leave me your comments down below with any thoughts that you might have on any of these films are there any that i should get to straight away are there any that you think i should pick up any recommendations that you've got for me based on what you've seen that i've, I've picked up here folks i love to love to chat to you all in the comments anyway so any thoughts you've got anything you want to have a natter about just pop it on down below Please give the video a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please think about doing so. It helps the channel to grow and of course I'd love to have you stick around for uh, for more videos to come. Above all else folks, as I always say, take care of yourselves and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. See you soon.